you know, the side is torn and, and he put a patch here and another patch there and another patch on his clothing. And I told him, brother, لِيَظْهَرْ أَثَرَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكِ there is a hadith where there was a man who walked into the presence of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And he was quite a wealthy man and he was dressed tattily. So what happened is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what is it that you have? What do you own? And he started counting. He said, I have this and that and so much in terms of livestock and what have you. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered words which are known as Jawami'i Kalimi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Few words with deep meaning. Few words with very deep meaning. He says, Let the gift of Allah upon you be apparent when someone sees you. It's part of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are a millionaire and you intentionally want to live as a pauper and you are wearing tatty clothing, it is not being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to wear clothing that is decent and good, not clothing that is in disobedience of Allah. Yes. It doesn't mean you are wealthy, so now you can show your legs. No, <laughs> Allah protect us. It doesn't mean you are wealthy, so suddenly the cleavage is showing. It happens. May Allah grant us strength. We need happiness, my beloved brothers and sisters. The owner of happiness is my maker and yours. And he is telling us, enjoy the world. Don't say, don't say divorce yourself from it. Enjoy it, but within limits. And this is what we call wasat in the middle. If you are going to drown in it, you will lose it and you will lose the next. Take a look at the pop stars and I'm not talking here of people who are Muslims who others look up to and so on. We are talking of non-Muslims from Hollywood, for example. And Wallahi, I, I have had a response from a few of them, to be honest with you. And you find that they are searching for something which that popularity will never bring them. It will never bring them. What are they searching for? They're searching for inner peace. And this is why I, I was once listening to one Sheikh speaking. And he is one of my teachers. So he said, you know the pop stars? They are called pop stars because after a while they pop. <laughs> and he started taking names to say, you know, this one has popped, that one has popped. And when we say pop, it means, you know, a normal human being is supposed to go upward in the ladder. And they are supposed to, at their point of demise, be the happiest person who is the closest to Allah. Study those who have divorced spirituality and gone into the world head first. You will find the higher they get, the more discontent they are. You know, you find one or two pop stars shaving their heads. I don't even want to say her name, but you know who she is. And you find others doing things that are weird and they don't have any form of contentment or happiness. So what happens? At the point of death, they die at such a point that the world will say, well, you know what? Don't remember her for how she died, but remember her for what happened in her life at one stage. Why that? We are Muslimin. Let us live in such a way that we build and build in a way that the others can take a lesson from our page. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And for this reason, we say, Allah says in the Quran, when you work towards the life after death and you bear in mind that you need to live in this world, in the obedience of that maker, by enjoying the world within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be the most successful. Because part of the plan of Allah is to allow humankind to enjoy what is in the world, bearing in mind what is to come is better, is better. My beloved brothers and sisters, some of you might have heard me saying, today we see beautiful colors and we see beautiful vehicles and lovely cell phones and you know ipads and all sorts of things and people are debating what is the best so one will tell you it is this and the other one will tell you it is that and someone will say it is this vehicle and the other one will say it is that vehicle have you ever thought for a moment that all that we put in our minds in terms of what's nice and what's not nice belongs to the world it's created from something within the world we have not yet seen anything from Venus or Pluto, let alone from heaven. And nothing from Mars will benefit us. Forget about, we're not talking yet about Jannah and Paradise. So everything we are basing our happiness on, everything we are basing our smiles on is actually part of the world. And Allah says, hang on man, you have not yet crossed the boundary. So that is why In heaven is that which no eye has ever seen, no ears have ever heard, and no mind has ever had it crossed through it. It has, if something has crossed your mind, it is not in heaven. Someone asked me, will there be a Bentley in heaven? <laughs> and I said, hang on, 
There are two ways to answer that. I can say yes and I can say no. But what I do know is the hadith says, if your mind has crossed it and you've seen it in KL, for example, it's not there. But I want a Bentley. So I said, okay, what you do is, if you have a Bentley in the Akhirah, you probably will have the worst transport. I don't know where you're going to go to get petrol because there won't be petrol there in Jannah. And I don't know how you will drive it because I don't know of the roads. Rather say, Ya Allah, grant me the best of, the, of Jannah. I haven't yet seen it. Then you have a woman saying to you, and it's a typical one, a woman saying to you, you know, in Jannah, am I going to be with the same man that I have been with all these years? You know, what's the point of going there then? You know? Now, the reality is, how can you utter that when you don't know in Jannah is whatever you desire? Allahu Akbar. What a powerful verse. Allah says, in Jannah is whatever the souls desire. And above that, whatever is delicious to your eyes. Imagine the wording of the Quran. You know, when I taste, how do I taste? I saw some of the sweetest cupcakes today and I had some, mashallah. Beautiful, alhamdulillah. I saw it, I tasted it. So I looked at it, I tasted it with my tongue. In Jannah, you taste with your eyes. Have you thought of that? Subhanallah, the Quran says it. Taladhul a'yun, that which is delicious to your eyes. You have it, it's yours. So imagine you just, you, whatever is there or what, even that which you, it crosses your mind, it will be in front of you. The point I'm making is, I want to get there and inshallah Allah gather us in the same way He has gathered us here, there as well. I mean. But together with that, my beloved brothers and sisters, we need to prepare. And part of the preparation is to understand the balance between the dunya 